Hello everyone, my name is Laura Jones and I am an independent artist and today I'm going to teach you how to paint an ocean feather scene. So here is one of my originals. Um, this is one of the second or maybe the third time I've painted this one. So um, keep in mind that anytime you do any kind of watercolor, um, it's a very fun medium, but unfortunately it can be hard to replicate a painting over and over. And like I said, I've painted this one three or four times and each one comes out differently and that's okay because that's what makes it interesting and that's what makes it yours and that's what makes it fun. So don't get upset at yourself if yours doesn't come out looking exactly like mine because we're different people and embrace what you can do and be courageous and you'll go far, I promise. Okay. So uh, some of the colors we're going to be using today, um, my palette is over here. Unfortunately, you can't see all the colors. I can't get everything into frame. So what I did is I made a couple of color swatches for you guys here. Um, so on this one here, it's uh, the Windsor and Newton uh, colors we're going to be using. We have Payne's Gray and Aqua Green, Prussian Blue, Turquoise, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, and sepia. And then on the Daniel Smith paints, I only have a couple. I included the quinacridone gold. Um, if you don't have these colors, then that's totally fine. This is a very similar color to either one of these. Um, it just sometimes has a little bit more vibrancy, so sometimes it's fun to add in uh, that color just specifically by itself and just drop a little bit in and uh, have that nice punch of color. Uh, the other color is going to be uh, aqua green? No, I'm sorry, cobalt teal. Excuse me, this one's cobalt teal. Um, and then we have Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is what we're going to use to add some of our highlights and add our uh, foam that's coming up onto the beach. So, um, all right, let's get started. Okay, so here's our outline, and it's just a basic feather outline, and this one is actually provided by Sarah Cray and Let's Make Art. They were generous enough to let me use this uh, outline in this tutorial. I had several people asking how I did my version of this project, and so I had contacted them asking them if it was okay if I made a tutorial and used their outline in it, and they agreed, and I am very thankful, and I just want to give a very big thank you to them for allowing me to do this. I really appreciate it, and I love Let's Make Art. If you've never heard of them, check them out. Go to their website, letsmakeart.com. They've got amazing stuff and great projects, and it's just a lot of fun. They really inspired me to get back into painting, and I just can't thank them enough for it. Okay. So for supplies, we have uh, some brushes here. I have a Princeton Heritage Round 6, and then we have a Princeton Heritage Round 2. This is a Best Round Number 1 by Creative Mark. A Windsor & Newton Triple Zero Round. And then I have a Princeton, I believe this is the Velvet Touch series, a 10 over 0 liner. So this one's a really nice fine brush. It's going to get us some great detail lines and uh, be very helpful. Okay, move these to the side. Okay, so for this feather, what we're going to want to do is uh, I like to start with some of my darker colors and we're going to put some dark colors up along this top ridge along here. And we're going to slowly pull that down and incorporate more of those lighter colors, some of those cobalts and the turquoise, and get a nice variation. So once we get down to uh, this vein or this center line, I kind of tend to use that as almost a, uh, a transition point to go into like what's going to be the beach. Um, so the sand that's going to be here and then all your sea foam and stuff is going to come right up along this way. So uh, that's kind of the guidelines. And again, this is just a basic outline. Um, yours might differ from mine. You might just freehand one, which is going to be great. Um, but you don't have to stick to this 100%. You know, if you go further down than I do or you stay higher than I do, it's fine. This is your painting. You can do anything you want with it. I love to be able to do anything I want with it, which is why all of my versions have come out just a little bit different. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Sorry, pull my water into frame here. There we go. Don't know if you guys can see that. So anytime I go up to this top corner, I'm just dipping into the water here. Okay, so we're gonna load my brush up with water. And as you can see on my palette, I've got a lot of uh, different colors already going on here. I don't tend to clean my palette, as you can see. It's very messy, and I tend to just reuse some of these same colors over and over, and so I just kind of add to them 
mix and make different colors. Um, that's one of the things I love about watercolors, mixing my own colors. So I rarely use colors just straight out of the tube as is. I like to mix and make things interesting and keep it different. All right, so we're gonna go into some Payne's Gray here. I'm gonna just throw it down here where I have some of this palette dirt going on. That's a nice dark color. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of that aqua green. And then I might go ahead and grab just a little bit of Prussian blue. Okay. Now I'm going to load my brush up. So I'm going to roll my bristles in this paint color and absorb as much of that as I can into my brush. Okay. And then we're just going to start. I'm going to start right here about a quarter of the way in and I'm just going to kind of start spreading that color. And then before my brush gets too dry or too um, not saturated with paint, I'm going to go ahead and dip into my water again, add a little bit more of that color. And then I'm going to go back to my water and just dip my brush once, then I'm going to bring that water and I'm going to start spreading it to help move this color along. And it's important if you can to try and work quickly to keep this paint flowing so that way it doesn't dry and create hard lines in your painting. And if it does, that's okay. There's ways to kind of work around that or manipulate it just a little bit to get rid of those hard lines. You may not get rid of them completely, but that's okay. So like this one, if I left that any longer, it would have been a nice hard line. So I'm just gonna move that down along there. Pick up some more dark. And we're just gonna work our way. We're going to be doing basically like a wet on wet technique. Um, so I'm just adding lots of paint and water to the page so that way I have a nice wet surface to work on and drop color into. Okay, so now I'm going to grab some of that Daniel Smith color here and I'm just going to kind of drop some in here and there just to give some color variation and a little bit of visual interest. Let's see. Grab some of that turquoise. It's a nice bright punch of color right there. I'm gonna add a little of that over here. And keep in mind, there's no wrong way to do this painting. You know, if you don't like the way it's coming out, then, you know, toss it out, start over. No reason to get mad at yourself or down on yourself. Add some of that turquoise in. Oh, that's nice up there. Just took a little bit of Payne's gray and just threw it right there in the middle. Okay, now we got some good color going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a damp brush with a little bit of water and I'm just gonna dot and throw some of these water droplets in just randomly. This gives some great texture and it's going to allow us to uh, have a place to kind of start finding some wave shapes. So now I'm going to pull some of this color down, work my way down a little bit more. And I'm going to try and keep it really light as I come in to the bottom here. Pull that down a little too far so I'm just kind of pushing it back up. some color over here before we totally forget about it. So see I kind of have a, a hard edge here so I'm just kind of working it back and forth with a damp brush and it's not going to get rid of that line 100% but that's okay. We can just add some dark color and kind of camouflage it and hide it. Yeah I'm getting a little bit messy. That's okay. I don't mind going out of the lines a little bit. A little more of that Payne's gray and turquoise. That's a nice combination there. Just 
going to kind of change that shape a little bit. That's okay. few feathers down here. Grab a little bit of water. Pull that down. Okay. And I realized I did forget to mention, um, with my outline, I traced it fairly dark. Uh, I just want to make sure that it was going to be able to show up on the camera. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, but when you do your outlines, if you don't want the pencil lines to show through your watercolor because the colors are transparent, um, you just want to trace it as light as possible. So, I mean, I can see this line through here. It's okay. I mean, normally if I was to do this painting for myself or for someone else, I would try and keep my pencil lines a lot lighter so you don't see much of that through this. But for this tutorial, I don't mind. I just want to make sure that you guys can hopefully see it and you can take some knowledge away from this and uh, have a good time doing it. Okay. I think I'm actually going to drop a little more color right in the center there. And I really like these textures going on, so I'm not going to touch those too much if I can help it. Kind of picking some spots to throw in a little bit of color here and there. Try and vary your colors and your washes if you can. It just gives a little bit more visual interest to your painting. Art is a great way to connect with people. It's one of my favorite things about it. And it doesn't matter where you are in your watercolor journey or how much skill you have or how much uh, time you've spent doing it. Got a little hair right here. You know, it's just something that everybody can enjoy, and like I said, I feel like it brings people together. It's something that you can bond with other people over with, and you know, you can always learn something in art, no matter how long you've been doing it. There's always something new to learn, which is amazing. I'm just gonna add a few more water drops in here. Have some fun things going on. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start on our sand. Um, so I have kind of this uh, already sandy color kind of going on here. And this, I believe, is a mix of the raw sienna with a little bit of burnt sienna. Kind of warm it up. And then just a touch of sepia just to kind of uh, darken that color just a little bit. And with the sand, you want to kind of start lighter if you can, because um, you can always add layers to watercolor to darken it, um, and it's always easier to start lighter and go darker rather than starting dark and trying to lighten it up. So I'm just going to put some of that down, take some water, and start to spread it out. As you see, up in this area here, as I added this kind of brown-yellow mixture, it's kind of turning a little bit more green, which is great. I love that. It's very true to nature, where with the blue water and these kind of brown sands, because blue and orange are complementary colors and brown is basically just a dark orange, it gives you these nice muted colors. And so it's... I enjoy those kind of colors just because they're different and it adds some more visual interest rather than just being a blue and then it stops and goes directly into the brown sand color. This gives it just a little bit more something else, something a little more special. Gonna keep going with the sand color here.
just be careful not to uh, to mix too much of this brown into your blue and, and work it back and forth because it will eventually turn into a very muddy color. So just lightly pull it up into that color there. Okay, and while this is still wet, I'm going to go in and grab some of those colors just pure by themselves. So here's some nice raw sienna here. Just kind of dropping that in. Nice bright colors. Kind of spread them out a little. Some raw sienna here. Nice bright orange. Just really let yourself have fun. Play with these colors, drop them in. You might really surprise yourself with some of the um, colors that you find that you really love. Maybe something that you didn't expect to enjoy so much. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. And who knows, that might be a color that you know you decide you want to keep using through a lot of your paintings into the future. And it's one of my favorite things about watercolors, all the different varieties of colors you can get, the different shades, the hues, values. It's just so wonderful. Okay. Got kind of a hard edge there, so I'm gonna just kinda try and work it a little bit back and forth. Add in a touch of sepia here and there. Because this color is so dark, I don't want to go crazy with it. Alright. Okay. So from here, we're going to let this dry. And, uh, oh, actually, I just saw, I did forget, a small piece down here. That little guy doesn't want to be forgotten. Here you go. Sorry, buddy. Maybe move some of that up into there. You know, let's go ahead and uh, paint the end of this stem while we're at it here. Just gonna grab a little bit more of that raw sienna and some sepia. And if you want to switch to a smaller brush for this, you definitely can. I'm just gonna put a little bit along the top and along the bottom. Take some water and just, just kind of put a little bit in between there. I'm not going to fully cover it and make it all one uh, shade. Uh, I like the variation of some white in there. It kind of gives it some pop of color. I know that sounds funny, but to me it gives some brightness and some interest to that section, which would normally be a little more boring if you just left it just plain straight one color. Okay, so we're going to let this dry, and we'll come back, and we'll start adding in some details. Okay, so now that our painting is completely dry, we can start working on some of our detail, um, like our foam and our waves, and adding some detail lines in here, and uh, start to pull this painting together. Alright, so let's see. I think I'm going to start with... Let's start with our two... And we're going to grab our bleed proof white. And if you've never used bleed proof white, it is like a paste. So it's very thick. Um, so you will need to use some water to kind of thin it out just a little bit. Um, it is opaque, meaning it's not going to be as transparent as the watercolor. Um, so it makes it very easy to do these kind of uh, detail lines and adding this foam and stuff on top of the color that we've already laid down. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of look for some shapes that I think maybe represent some waves. Um, this one right here looks like it's it's kind of a wave like that would be crashing over on itself. So I think I'll take advantage of that here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do dots. I'm just kind of doing some dashed lines. They're not in any shape in particular. I'm just kind of moving my brush along. And then from here, I'm going to rinse my brush. Got blue proof white all over the side of my cup here. 
There we go. And I'm going to kind of pat my brush off so it's not really wet, it's just a little damp. And I'm just going to kind of scrub along the bottom in circular motions, just kind of grabbing the edge of that paint and just kind of pulling it away. So from there, we can go ahead and, again, the damp brush, I'm just going to touch along the top of this line, just barely tapping, because I don't want it to be a super hard line, but I also don't want to have it be as blended out as this other one. There we go, just like that. And we'll probably let that dry and then we'll probably do another layer over it to kind of help emphasize what we're showing here. So let's see. Let's see if we can pick out some more wave lines. This one to me, I, this hard edge that formed right here, I'm actually going to use that as a wave that's going to be crashing up. Maybe this one's crashing over some rocks and maybe the rocks are closer here so the wave doesn't make it over it, but it's going to uh, crash up that rock face maybe. So we're just going to uh, just gonna kind of follow that line a little bit. the same thing. I'm just going to uh, take a damp brush and just pull this down. Okay. some basic wave lines in here. And do the same thing. I just take a damp brush and I'm going to be pulling from behind this line. I'm just going to kind of pull it out. This one I might have waited a little. Put it on a little too dry so it's not really blending out that much. That's okay. Always add another layer right on top of that. There we go. Now it's spreading its way back there. I'm going to just uh, put some, some wave lines back here. Now I'm not doing perfectly straight lines. I'm kind of just letting my hand kind of bounce around a little. So that way they're not perfectly straight. It's a little more true to nature. And again, just gently blending out the bottom of this. right here is very interesting. I can't decide if I want to add any white to this or if I just want to leave it the way it is. It's so interesting. I just can't, I can't decide on that one. So I think maybe we'll just uh, work around it for now. 
until I can see what pops out at me. I might even add a little bit darker color up in here just so we can really show that distance Okay, I guess since we're working in some dark, we'll go ahead and add some uh, darker detail lines. I'm just going to take uh, some Payne's gray here. And you can switch to a smaller brush if you're not comfortable using the two. Um, do whatever he feels right. Whatever's comfortable for you. And again, we just want to kind of want to blend the bottom of those lines out just a little bit. Okay. Let's see. back to our bleed proof white here. Let's go ahead and we'll uh, just turn this one into a crashing wave too. Might let that dry out a little more. This one here should be dry. We can probably add a little bit more onto that.
Yeah, still two went there. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to uh, some. Well, actually, you know this part's pretty bare over here. Let's uh, let's do something over here. area a little bit more too. darker color really makes those lighter whites pop a little bit. Maybe add just a little bit more over here. So now I think we can move on to the um, the foam. I think everything is pretty dry here. Yep, yep, pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our bleed proof white. I'm gonna stick with my two. Um, I like the size of it for now. It's working very well for me. So I'm just gonna kind of roll my brush around in here, get lots of bleed proof white on it. I am going to kind of bend my bristles into it so there's not so much like dripping from it but the bristles are still very coated I don't know if you guys can see that okay and to do the foam what I like to do is I like to take advantage of the fact that these brushes can give you a very thick line um, in the same stroke as a thin line so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start kind of on the point of my brush and as I move I'm going to push down hard and I'm gonna kind of wiggle it just to give it you know a little organic feel okay so then once you start running out of some paint and it gets these kind of harder um, lines that's when you know you're out of white on there and then again I'm just gonna take a damp brush and I'm gonna kind of kind of just gently blend out the back of that Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. Roll your brush around in there. And let's do one, maybe crossing over here. I 
and you can kind of lift up, change the thickness of that line. I think I'm going to keep going with this one I liked the way it was going. And now the thing to remember about the waves, um, what I feel works really well uh, to my advantage and what I find seems to be the most, um, I guess, appealing uh, to make it look more realistic, I guess, um, is in here we have this really nice light color, but you still have some of that blue coming through the bleed proof white. And so we leave just that little bit and then we put a nice bright white over top of that, leaving this space open and it really gives you that value shift and that um, contrast that really makes it very interesting and very appealing. So uh, that's one of my favorite things to do when I'm painting ocean scenes or beach scenes like this uh, because it seems very true to nature. The waves kind of move over each other in different ways and so you'll have different areas with different densities of foam that wash up onto the beach. So just kind of a helpful little hint, uh, hopefully you understand what I was trying to explain there and uh, and you can can see it I hope all right let's let's keep going here I think I'm gonna put some more waves down here since I have these um, dark outlines showing through with a pencil I'm gonna try and cover some of those up with the bleed proof white again you can put them wherever you want them you don't have to follow this uh, I'm just trying to give you ideas on how you can paint something like this See, let's maybe bring one here. Can I drag that out? with it you know if you lay something down and you absolutely hate it just use a damn brush and you can pretty much just lift it right up you know I'll show you that right now actually so say if I don't want this one here I'm just gonna take my brush and it's damp and I'm just kind of wiggling it over the paint gently lifting it out and just like that that line's gone simple so don't stress don't freak out just uh, take a damp brush and lightly scrub it out. Most of the time you can get things like that out. As long as it's not a terribly dark color, most of the time you can lift something or at least lighten it enough to where you can um, manipulate it to cover it or change it or add to it however you need to. But I think I want to put one more little ripple over here. I'm just having too much fun with these. <laughs> but that's the best part, right? If you're having fun, keep doing it. Sorry, that's my doggy. He's just wondering what is going on in here. Why do I have all these lights on? What's going on, bud? Who am I talking to, huh? That's really nice. I like the transparency that I'm getting 
even though the bleed proof white is more opaque if you lighten it with water you still get some of that transparency so you can still see some of those colors which again just like on the beach you know the water is not always 100% perfectly clear and it's not always 100% murky so this is kind of something in between to where you can see little bits here and there throughout which is really really nice I appreciate those kind of uh, things that I can I can find in watercolor and when I find things like that I really like to use them where I can okay so I think I don't need any more of these waves or the foam going on I think that's pretty good and you can add as many or as little as you want if you want to keep going with this definitely do it like I said you can do anything you want with this it's totally your decision your choice have fun go crazy so I think what I'm gonna do is um, this line is still bothering me just a little bit through the pencil line which I understand you know it's it's going to show through because I put it on there pretty dark but I think I'm gonna just mix up some sepia and some of my burnt sienna and I'm gonna just kind of uh, see if I can cover that just a little make it just a little less obvious I guess And you know, sometimes you have to let the painting just kind of take you where it's going to take you. So the funny thing is, after we put in this white, we're going to be putting in shadows. Well, because I laid this really dark color down and it made this line, it already looks like a shadow to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to take some bleed proof white and carefully go along the top line of this dark shadow to give it the depth um, to make it look like, you know, that foam is sitting, you know, up on the beach, so it's not perfectly flat. It, it has some dimension and some shape to it. So while we're waiting for that to dry, because I'm impatient and I just like to play, I'm going to pull out some more colors here. And we're just going to throw some more colors in. Just, just have fun. Actually, I don't think I've used the Quinn Gold yet, so let's go ahead and use that Quinacridone Gold. Show you the bright color this thing has. Look at that! It's so fun! You know, I like that so much, I think I'm going to put a little of that on this side here, too. Just a hint. Not a lot. I'm not going to go super crazy. I am going to add a little of this sand color into this wave right here. I feel like that. It needs a little, a little something something. Okay. Yeah, I really like those those little pops of color. They're just fun. Very pretty. Okay. Alright, well, since we're waiting for some of this to dry a little bit, um, Let's go ahead and we can work on some of our line work, um, add some of the details down here. So I'm just going to take some of this brown kind of color that we have kind of going on here and add some to my liner. I'm just going to do a few little like wisps 
I guess, if that's what you want to call them. Now, these are pretty light, so I don't know if they're going to show up on camera. Um, I'm sorry if they don't. But uh, that's one of the wonderful things about watercolor is these really transparent, super light colors. You know, in other mediums, you usually think, oh, that's way too light. I can't put that on the page. Nobody's going to see it. But with watercolor, because it's transparent, it almost like lights up on the page. At least when I look at it, I see these really beautiful colors. Um, and it's one of my favorite things about watercolor. So I just, I really embrace those really light tones. I'll go ahead and grab some blues. Do a few blue ones in here. Just here and there. I'm just kind of using my liner to kind of clean up some of these lines, make them a little more crisp. Not quite enough water on my brush there. So if you get these uh, lines that are like kind of jagged or they skip, that generally means you don't have enough uh, paint and water on your brush. Um, or I guess maybe not enough water, because uh, if you have a lot of paint it just kind of drags across the paper. So, helpful hint. Let's see, I'm gonna use a little more sepia. A little bit darker color here. And I really like this kind of greenish kind of color that we have going on in some of these places. So I'm actually going to mix up something similar just by taking my blue and a little bit of this yellow. I'm just going to make it kind of this muddy kind of greenish kind of color. I really like that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a short break here and then we're going to come back and we will add in uh, our wave on top of this shadow and then we're going to add in the shadows underneath these waves or this foam here and um, yeah, it's going to be great. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so um, we're back here and now I think we are ready to get started on adding our shadows under our uh, waves or our foam here and uh, let's go. Let's see, I think, I think for this we're going to go ahead and switch to our one. Oh, you know what, before we do that I do need to add this wave back in here. We can probably still do that with the one, it should be fine. Go ahead and get some paint on that brush. Gently go along the edge. I 
I might make this one a little thicker. So I have a little bit more to spread back. and add just a touch of color. I think I'm going to take some of that cobalt if I can get it to show up here. Really cool. Just a little bit of color right under there. Maybe a touch of turquoise. see one more spot now that I've stepped back away from the painting which I should mention is um, a really good practice when you are painting a lot of times when we sit down and we focus on a painting like this we're so close that we don't see some things until we actually step away from the painting and then you come back to it so before I left I didn't realize that the way this was kind of bleeding into this down here and it's just kind of a strange edge I guess for where we're at. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that into um, a little bit more of this sea foam here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my bleed proof white. Wipe it off a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of bring it along here. Rinse my brush. Pull some of that back. Okay. And I might even take a little dark color here, maybe add some of that aqua green. Just add a little bit of dark on in this wave here. Just gonna kind of blend that out. Got another little hair. I don't know where they're coming from. Come on, little buddy. All right, well, I think he wants to stay. I'll have to pick him up later. Okay, yeah, I like that better. Okay, so now, um, let's see. Back to our shadows, let me close this. Okay, so back to our one. And we're gonna go ahead and grab some sepia. And I'm sorry, but I might have to turn this a little bit just so I can get a little bit better angle to get underneath some of these white spots here. So we're going to start over here so I don't end up putting my hand in anything wet. And I'm going to just go along very carefully along the edge of this white. Rinse my brush. And quickly I want to blend this out. And this brush might actually be too small because I can't keep my brush quite damp enough. So I'm going to switch to my two here. And I want to leave just the slightest bit of color left under there. Okay. Just like that. Now we're going to do that on our next set. Brush 
and just start pulling that color away. Now for these ones that are actually further back into the water, I'm not going to put shadows um, that are brown. I might go back and add a little darker color kind of underneath there to kind of show that they are um, further away and kind of on top of the other one, uh, or I guess casting a shadow onto this lower part of the wave there. Um, but for this one here on the sand and probably maybe even this one and back along this one here, but these ones that are more in the water, I, I'm not sure that I'm going to necessarily add that there. I'm not sure that it would make sense. Sorry, just going to blend that out there. So let's go ahead and add, <coughs> excuse me, add on to this one here. And the brush. And we're just going to kind of blend that out. Couple more. I think I'm going to add just, just a hint on that side, so that makes a little more sense where they're flowing, where they're going to. I'm going to go ahead and add this one here. Okay, I might actually add just a little bit right there. I think I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. I'm just going to add a little water and pull some of this other color in here. And lighten that up because I really like this golden kind of color that's under here. I don't want to take away too much from it by adding such a dark color right there near it. But I still want some shadow on this one. Yeah, I really like that. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, so now, what do we have left here? We have our birds so we need to add in. Um, so I think now is a good time before we add our birds in to kind of, um, again, kind of step back and just take a look at your painting. See if there's anything that is uh, jumping out at you that maybe you're unhappy with or that you want to change or that you don't necessarily like. And see what we can do to um, alter that. So there's a couple of things that I'm seeing here. I'm going to go back to my bleed proof white. I like this wave here. I just want to um, maybe give the indication of where it's coming from. So I'm going to just kind of drag some of this along there and blend that out just a little bit. Hopefully that makes more sense. Maybe add just a little bit more. I'm going to add just a little bit more on top here. I'm going to add just a few little detail uh, splashes here. Not too many, just a few. 
because you know as the waves crash they have ocean spray that kind of comes up those are nice little details to add in might just blend a little of this out not much just a touch here and there okay with that so another spot that I am seeing is uh, this section right here I feel needs to be a little bit more defined uh, because we have one wave going up and one wave crashing over so I'm gonna see if I can get that to kind of stand out just a little bit so I'm gonna take some darker color right under here a little better it uh, defines that maybe just a little bit more might try and add just a little bit more dark just right under this uh, top of the curl there watercolor it's all about the value changes is how you communicate different things across your painting so without the contrast of this really dark over the white it doesn't necessarily have a lot of form so to create that form you need that contrast so if you think about when a light hits an object if the light is directly on one side it's going to be the brightest and then the furthest away from the light is going to be the darkest so because this wave is coming over, the sun will be coming in and hitting the top of this wave and shadowing the underneath part. So your wave is going to be like this. So if I hold my hand, I'm sure you can kind of see my top fingers are lit. But down here near my palm is a shadow. So it just shows you that my palm is further away from the light than my fingers are. So hopefully that makes sense and it maybe helps. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I might add just a little bit more dark along here. Kind of pull that down. Just to kind of define the top of that wave like it's curling backwards away from us. Okay. So now I think I am ready to move on to some details in the water. And uh, what we're going to do for that, again, we're gonna go back to the bleed proof white. Sorry, I'm kinda bouncing around back and forth between it there. But uh, that, that really is the way I paint. I uh, do little bits here and little bits there and I constantly change my mind on things. And uh, it's just my process. So I'm okay with it. I embrace it, I use it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my liner 10 over 0 and we're just going to kind of put some uh, some squiggles, I guess, um, if you will. So I just kind of bounce my brush along. Not really thinking too much about, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of following like if the wave is going up, the lines are going to be going up so they're not going to be going horizontal, they're going to be going more vertical. So just some uh, some details in there. Maybe do a few here. Yeah, I put that one in. I'm not crazy about it, so I'm just gonna kind of blend it back out. See, just like that, and out it goes. And maybe a few here. And we got a little little thick there. That's okay. I'm gonna just use that to our advantage and just 
pull it out and look at that. Now we got another little wave. Okay. A few more lines here. I'm not going to go too crazy with these. Just a few. This kind of helps uh, to give uh, some direction for which way your waves are going. It kind of helps the viewer hopefully understand what's, uh, what's happening in your scene. Might add a few, few details back here. I'm just gonna kind of blend the bottom of that out. again, if you lay something down and you don't really like it, just take a damp brush and blend it out. This bleed proof white is pretty forgiving. And if you can, try and let your brush kind of like skip across the page. So here I'm just kind of like, I'm dragging it. And I'm just kind of letting it move. I'm not trying to be super steady or um, exact with the movements. I want to leave them more, uh, you know, organic and free flowing. Feels a little bit more natural that way. This one went on a little too thick, so I'm just kind of pulling some of that away and back off the page. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to call the water details done. I feel like that's just enough. Don't want to overdo it. Okay, and now we are ready to add our birds, and we're almost done, you guys. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Uh, I hope I'm not terrible at this. This is my very first tutorial. I've never done anything like this, um, but since I had several people ask, I thought, you know what? Sure, I'll give it a shot. Why not? You know, what do I have to lose? If you hate it, you can just turn it off, and you never have to wash it again. And if you love it, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take some black. I did forget to mention we were using black, but you don't have to. We can always use uh, that indigo color because it's a, a really dark blue color. It doesn't have to be black. I'm just going to add a little of that to the indigo. Make it dark. All right, and I have switched to my triple zero. And this is a teeny, teeny, tiny brush. Um, it allows you to get some really fine tiny details <clears throat> excuse me so I am going to uh, turn my page just a little bit hopefully that doesn't mess up your frame too much um, and we're just gonna kind of add like these little V shapes and I'm not gonna do all my birds the same some of them are just gonna be one line because maybe that bird is flying from the side and you don't see all of him And I try and vary my angle on them if I can. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna pick up a lighter color. Just kind of picking some colors off of here. Nothing, anything in particular. Oops, we got a water drop in here. There we go. Necessarily as light as I wanted. 
So I'm going to just pull out a little bit of blue and some gray here. Try and get a nice white. There we go. Okay. There's some birds. And now I like to just take a minute um, in the very last minutes of my painting, look it over and say, are there anything, you know, any places I want to change, anything I want to add. And the one thing that's kind of sticking out to me is uh, this um, end of the, the feather here, the end of the quill. I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker value because once those blended out, they kind of became too similar. Give it some interest there. Hey guys, okay, so um, I really apologize because, like I said, this is my first tutorial, so I kind of am trying to remember a lot of things all at once, and I completely forgot to check all the storage on my phone, and so it's been recording onto my internal, which doesn't have a lot of memory instead of my SD card, so unfortunately I was just painting along and moving right ahead and just doing all the stuff I want to do and it stopped recording. <laughs> so I'm so sorry you guys. Um, some of it has been um, done and not recorded so I'll just quickly walk you through what I've done. Um, I added some darker tones down here to kind of clean up these lines along the bottom and just kind of pull this in a little bit tighter so it looks a little bit nicer. Um, and. I think that was pretty much all I did. I don't think it was anything too major, which is fine because now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do the same thing along this top. So you'll still be able to see what I did. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get moving. And I'm actually rolling, so that's good. All right. Oh, and I just went into the dark because I was just talking about the brown. So I had those brown sand colors on my brain. Okay, let's go into our Pain's gray here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that aqua. There we go. And I might have to rotate this, so I'm really sorry if that's um, distracting for you or harder to see what I'm doing. Um, unfortunately, I tend to have to move my paper all around to get the best angles on things, um, so I'm very sorry about that. So I'm just going to take some dark here. And just kind of clean up some of these lines. And if you're not getting exactly the um, nice fine edge that you want to, you can either switch to your one. I'm actually going to switch to my uh, triple zero here just so I can get a really nice fine point on some of these smaller ones. I got a little hair here. There we go. Nope. Yeah, I think I got them. Thank you. 
get some of those nice, crisp, super thin lines. If you want to add in some more detailed ones since we're here, feel free to. I don't have any real dark blue ones down here, so I might add a few. Sorry, I'm being so quiet, but uh, details, I always tend to get really quiet because I'm really focusing. Sometimes my husband will come in and talk to me and he'll ask me a question and he'll sit there for a minute in silence and he's like, did you hear me? Yeah, sorry, dear. I'm just really focused on this, this spot right here. I'm so sorry. And he's so sweet. He always understands. Okay. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to take a minute to look over and see if there's any last details that I want to add, anything that I want to change or improve. I think I'm going to just take a little bit more color right in here. those shadows and we lost some of that lighter blueish color that we had under there. Probably made that a little too dark so I'm going to just try and lift some of that back out. pretty happy with this and I think I'm gonna call that a stopping point at least for now and for this tutorial um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this um, I'm sorry if I was really bad at it or 
you know, you have a hard time seeing something, I'm really trying to um, just start my hand at, at these tutorials and see um, what I can do and what I can come up with. Um, if you guys have any questions or you have any comments or there's something that you would like to see in a future tutorial, if you think I'm good enough to do these, I would love to hear about it. Um, if you have any, uh, you know, critiques or, um, you know, polite uh, criticisms, I would appreciate it. Uh, anything to help me help you is what I'm looking for. So um, the last thing to do uh, with every painting is to just initial it, sign it, however you do it. I'm just going to grab some color here on my little triple zero. I always sign everything with this one. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a nice short brush, um, easy for me to sign with. So. Pick my spot. I think we're gonna go right here. Okay. And that's it. I hope you guys had fun. I had a great time doing this. Sorry for some of the hiccups and some of the uh, missteps on that. Uh, I promise that the more I do these, the better I'll get. And thanks for sticking with it, and I hope you learned a lot. Have a good one. Bye.